All right, well, let's, I apologize. We're just kidding around. Okay, so this morning I'd like to apologize because I'm going to talk to you about a patient of mine who had a complication. And although I'll record this on video, this will never appear on YouTube. Uh, so one of the terrible, devastating, awful complications of that mini gastric bypass is you can get an ulcer or gastritis or an upset stomach, or you can actually get an ulcer that is so deep it either causes bleeding or a perforation. Okay? We found in our research that a lifetime of the MGB is about the same as a lifetime of taking a baby aspirin. So a baby aspirin taken every day for the rest of your life has about a 5% incidence of GI bleeding per year. 5 to 6%. And in our patients who've had the MGB, around 5% of patients get an ulcer and then a few, a handful, actually get an ulcer that's so deep it actually puts a hole in the gut just like a ruptured appendix or a gunshot wound or a stab wound. So the surgery, which has many benefits. So I don't really like to talk about complications, so it's going to be a real short video. No, we like to talk about the benefits, like we hope and pray that we're going to cure your diabetes and high blood pressure and things like that. But along with those benefits, the massive weight loss and the good things come some negatives. And one of the most uh, dangerous, serious negatives is an ulcer, gastritis, or an actual perforated ulcer, and that's what you suffered on what day last week? Wednesday. On Wednesday. Okay. And so you ca called me about what time in the morning, Kelly? 7 a.m. Called me 7 a.m., and I said, go to the ER. And she did, but I was foolish. I didn't say come to my ER. Right. Bad me. So in the future, those of you in Alaska can't use this advice, but those of you who live in Las Vegas come to my ER at St. Rose. But you went to the local ER, they said you had a perforated, ulcer, perforated bowel, yeah. needed emergency surgery, and in a, in a polite way, I, I hope I volunteered, I would prefer for you to have your surgery here. And we got you transferred, yep. and you got here about what time? Uh, 9, 9.30. Got here about 9, 9.30, and then we operated about 1, 2? Yes. Yeah, it was quick. Yeah, it was quick. So, I, so I'm emphasizing the positive. That's, that's what I call service. You know, in other words, you call seven, you get hair, you get surgery. So uh, we knew what it was. We predicted it from from the beginning. Told the ER, transferred right to the OR, and we operated. And the surgery itself took 20 minutes. So that's a short, simple surgery. Put a stitch in it. And then uh, that's it's awful to have the complication, but easy to fix and then you stayed two extra days in the hospital yep. and um, now he's better is that right kind of better oh. so it was terrible pain so first of all why do we tell our patients don't smoke don't drink alcohol don't take aspirin eat your yogurt take your tums things like that because we know that this complication can happen. Okay? Don't drink alcohol. Don't drink soda pop. Don't forget to take your Tums and eat your yogurt because this complication can happen to you. And you don't want this complication. Uh, especially if you live in the Bahamas, those surgeons over there might do good. I don't see it. Arnold, good. They might do something different because we've had people have a perforated ulcer in another city and they've taken apart the gastric bypass and done a surgery with a big incision and stuff like that because they're not as comfortable with the surgery as I am. So we've had several people like that. So you don't want to get an ulcer if you can avoid it. Now I've asked Ed to tell a little fib for the video to claim that he was smoking because I want to have all you smokers out there quit smoking. But in fact, he was doing pretty much everything right. He was almost a perfect patient. Is that right? I believe so. So you're eating healthy. Correct. No cigarettes. Correct. Right? No alcohol. Correct. No soda pop. Correct. Coffee. No. Okay. And taking your Tums. Mm. So. We forgot. Okay. Eating yogurt. No. Eh. Do you like having a perforated ulcer? Oh, absolutely. Uh, yogurt? I'm eating my yogurt. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have questions about yogurt. Good. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to do that. But 
So, again, not to blame him, this is my fault because of the surgery. The surgery, unfortunately, has a risk, just like taking an aspirin. You know, and that's why we have the permit. We tell you, we hope, so it's clear, that this is a trade-off. There are many benefits, and uh, if, you, if you look at husband and wife, you guys are handsome and beautiful. You don't, don't take that the wrong way, but uh, I think you look really good. No, wait a minute. <laughs> but with those benefits go dangers. So for the rest of your life, you face this risk of getting an ulcer or gastritis or something like that. Oh, that's okay. Thank you. Okay. No, it's okay. Thanks. Is there something for your podium? Oh, that's okay. We can get a new podium. Okay. So, anyways, the good news is that we found it, we treated it, you're going to get better from it, and we're going to talk about what to do, some questions that you have. But warning to those who are watching the video, this is the danger that we fear. Yesterday I was talking to a patient from Boise, Idaho. Okay? He wants to come and have surgery, and he talked to a doctor in Mexico who said he could drink alcohol and smoke cigarettes and drink soda pop, and I kind of disagree. I think that those things are dangerous. In my patients, they often cause ulcers, so be careful. Um, now, you have questions. Do you want to go through your questions now? Yes. Um, okay. In the hospital, Bob was given this fantastic yummy yogurt. Okay. Right. Now, you had said plain, plain yogurt. So I went, to, I went to Trader Joe's and I got plain yogurt and I brought it home and it tasted like crap. Okay? And it just so happened that I happened to try the yogurt before we got to the hospital. We got to the hospital, he had lunch sitting there, so I said, let me try this yogurt that Dr. Rutledge has for his MGB patients. No, 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 no. That, that's a, it would be good if I was king here. At this you hospital, are king, right? yes. Well, not everyone realizes I'm okay. king. So, so when I tell the people in the nutrition area that I would like plain yogurt, they bring pudding. Okay. Okay. It's now delicious. it is nothing like pudding. Don't you prefer pudding? I like pudding. Of course. All right. Yogurt many years ago came to America, and Americans said this stuff tastes like sour milk. Right. Or to yeah. use your term, crap. Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right. So, uh, American companies said, we're not going to make any money selling sour milk. So they took it and they fixed it. So you know what TCBY is? You know what that stands for? Well, this is not really yogurt. This is not really <laughs> <laughs> It's pudding. So you, you are allowed to eat pudding. But the research suggests that the bacteria in plain yogurt is really a good choice. And when they make pudding, they often add in milk solids, which have a lot of lactose, it can upset your stomach, and sugars and other things. So, again, for the medicine side, if you want to eat pudding for fun, fine. But if you want to eat yogurt for health, plain, and as you described it, slightly unpleasant tasting, yogurt is what we want. Okay. So, the probiotic, non-fat yogurt, vanilla is not good, just plain. Well, wait one second. I, I had two, let me come back to you. Yes, we had two other questions. I'll get. Okay. If the enzymes are important, you want the enzymes in the gut, and you also want the enzymes in the lower intestine, right? Sure. Because I did some research. And I had some other surgery last week. When I had my surgery, I love yogurt. I have a problem. But I found that there's powder, you know, uh, uh, the enzymes is called iFlora, and you can add it to your milk or your water, and it's actually more potent in terms of enzymes than what's in yogurt. So I, I'm thinking, though, if you want it delivered to the gut and it's going to go through faster, the powder would be better for that, but then the pill, which takes longer to dissolve, would be better for the lower part of the intestine so that it would survive. Good question. Let me come back to that. And what was your question? I want to know how often. Um, a, a perfect, in a perfect world, I'd like you to have one or two teaspoons three times a day. So you wouldn't have to eat the whole cup, but I would eat it. Now, why are you taking the bacteria in? Why do you want those bugs? Because they compete with the bad bug that causes ulcers. So we want the good bug. Now, what you said sounds perfect. It says, I really can't stand the yogurt, so I'll take a pill, which has the bugs in it. Doesn't that sound better to you? And then you can have pudding afterwards. Does that sound better? Sounds better to me. I'd rather take a pill. I'd much rather. Okay. Hey, can, all right. Wait a minute. As you said, mildly unpleasant tasting plain yogurt or pudding and a pill. Okay. What does America want? We want pudding and a pill. <laughs> no, yeah. All right. 
here's the question. Here's the research that bothers me because I want to say yes to the putting in a pill approach. I want to do that. I want to say yes. So I'm going to tell you, I could tell you a hundred stories, a hundred research projects, but I'll just tell you a couple to show the problem with choosing the pill over the healthy food. All right, there's lots of research, dozens of studies, that if your blood has high levels of beta carotene or vitamin A, you have less cancer, heart attack, stroke, and death. Let me say that again. If you have a diet that's full of carrots, that has lots of beta carotene and vitamin A, and your bloodstream is full of beta carotene and vitamin A, you have less heart attack, stroke, and death. 20 years ago, the Veterans Administration said all of our patients are getting cancer. And these studies show lots of carrots in your diet, fresh, healthy vegetables, and beta carotene, vitamin A in your bloodstream, less cancer. Let's take all of our smokers, all these smoking veterans, 17,000 of them, and give half of them a, a pill with extra vitamin A in it, extra beta carotene in it. Right? Because that's what we want. I don't want to eat a carrot. I'm busy right now. I was driving to work. I want to be able to answer my email, shave, put on my makeup, and, and take a pill. Right? I can't do that and have a carrot. 17,000 veterans, half of whom got the pill. Their vitamin A levels and their beta carotene levels went up in their blood. And the, after millions of dollars spent on that research, the pill didn't help at all as far as cancer, and it actually increased the risk of hip fracture. So you don't find much about vitamin A now. You, don't, you can't even buy, you used to be able to buy 50 or 100,000 units of vitamin A, it's taken off the market. And look at the multivitamins, the dose of vitamin A in those vitamins has gone down. So wait a minute, we said that if you eat a healthy diet, if you have high beta carotene or high vitamin A in your blood, you'll have less cancer. And we tried it in a controlled prospective trial. It didn't help and actually hurt. How can that be? Because the pill is not equal to a healthy diet. The pill may be the fin of the shark. I'm frightened to death when I see the fin of the shark, but it's not the fin that bites me. Okay? I can do this study a hundred more times. I'll do one more for you. Isn't B12 good for you? Sure. Don't we all agree low B12 is damaging? People who have high B12, high folate, high B6 in their blood have less heart attack and stroke and death. Not who took pills, but who have it in their bloodstream or eat foods that have those things. So, they have done a dozen studies now where they gave patients pills of B12 and folate and B6. Most recently, a couple weeks ago, published in JAMA, the Journal of the American Medical Association, they took diabetics who were getting kidney failure because the hardening of the arteries was closing off and killing their kidneys. And they said, aha, we'll give them high doses of B12 and folate and B6. Those are good, right? Folate, B12, aren't they good? What did they find? At the end of that study, the diabetics who got high doses of B12 and folate and B6 had worse kidney function. The pills of the vitamins hurt them. I don't like this. This bothers me. I'm angry. I'm upset. I'm disappointed. I cry at home at night because I want to take a pill and be healthy. I do not want to have a fresh green salad and cut up a green pepper. I want to have a pill and pudding. <laughs> now, yogurt in mice helps eat up the oxalate and protect you against kidney stones. Plain yogurt, the bacteria in plain yogurt. Pills of the bacteria might be equal to the yogurt, but I'm not sure of that because the, the, the yogurt bacteria might be the fin of the shark. So you certainly can take those probiotic pills. I like them. I'm not opposed to them. I don't know of anything bad about them, 
but I suggest from the research I've read, eat yogurt. I'm sorry, I don't want to say that. I know you don't like it. I know it doesn't taste good. Well, how about Activia? Now, Activia is great because it has two bugs, not just one. So it's got not only lactobacillus, but it also has bifidobacteria, which all of you know, we love bifidobacteria. It's a good one. We like it. But they've also added a bunch of sugar and other milk solids, so it often upsets your stomach if you're lactose intolerant. We like the bacteria, but I'm not so much sure about the activity. I'm not sure it's a bad idea. I'm not hating on it, but eat plain yogurt several times a day to protect your gut. What if we, you know, thinking this, what if we took the one to two teaspoons yep. of plain and mix it with activity? Um, maybe, but again, I don't know the research on that. Gotcha. Mixing it, with, okay. mixing things with sugar uh, and lactose can be a problem. So, uh, we recently had a patient, and she had diarrhea and cramps, and abdominal pain, abdominal bloating, terrible pain, and and she was just devastated. And I said, "Are you eating yogurt?" She said, "Yes," and she was eating one of those sugary sweet yogurts, the Yoplait. Okay. All right. Now that Yoplait, have you tasted the Yoplait yogurt? Mm -hmm. Tastes great. I mean, it's pudding, right? It's ice cream. If you if you cooled it off, I, I would take it take an ice cream cone, right? Um, it turns out when she stopped taking the Yoplait, she stopped with the cramps and the gas because there's so much lactose in the Yoplait. In plain yogurt, the bacteria is there more. They don't just add the milk solids, which has a lot of lactose, and so her all of her problems got better when she got off that yogurt. Is there any difference, like for the Greek yogurt? Yes, I've Greek. Heard a lot about. Yeah, that. Greek I is. Uh, I'm an American. There's not enough fat in this for me. I want something more like creamy pudding. So they modify yogurt by adding more milk fat and cream. So Greek would be better. No, is adding that? extra grease and fat is not necessarily oh, good. Okay, that's what's going on. Okay. And, and the okay, you gave for saying uh, the first stage. Yeah, but talking about yogurt, and you say plain yogurt, uh, no culture or like. But in the in the grocery store, I find only non-fat plain yogurt, and the one that says just plain yogurt has culture. No. So uh, I still get the non-fat. No. No, 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 no. What you said makes perfect sense. It's wrong. So let's see what she said. Okay, calories are our enemy. Calories are bad. I'm fat because it. No, I only got the non fat because in the booklet it specifies plain yogurt, not, not with culture. They don't have it. Well, that's okay. Whatever the book says, I'm going to tell you what's right now. Okay. okay. A lot of people choose non fat yogurt. Right or or non-fat unsweetened foods. Right. So uh, here's my question: Did on that non-fat yogurt is there anything on the thing that says this has been shown to help you lose two pounds over a year by eating non-fat as opposed to fat yogurt? No. Is that on there? Did you see that anywhere? No. Huh? No, sir. How about how about Diet Pepsi? Anybody ever seen a Diet Pepsi can? Ever seen it? Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> You've seen one, right? You see anywhere on there, near there, on the end cap at the grocery store where it says drinking Diet Pepsi helps you lose a half a pound over drinking regular Pepsi. Did you see that on the ad anywhere? No. Hmm? If that were true and you owned Pepsi, do you think you would put that on the ad? Even if it helped you lose six ounces in a year? If it lo lo lost the weight of a sheet of paper, I would put it on there? Okay, and you don't see it anywhere, do you? <coughs> Can you name any diet like, <coughs> you know, Equal, Splenda? On the box there, does it say, by using Equal over the past 24 months, we 17 co-eds at uh, New York State University lost one pound compared to those eating regular sugar. Have you seen that study? Yeah. If that study was anywhere, even if it was done in Bulgaria, 
by people without training. Wouldn't you don't don't you think we would hear about that? If you own Splenda, would you leak that study to the press? Sure. Would you blog about it? Would you hire a blogger to say, hey, in Bulgaria, Splenda caused a pound of weight loss? Do you know why you haven't heard any of that research? Because nope. it doesn't help you lose weight. Now, it makes sense. It makes sense. I have a choice, high-fat food, low-fat food. What should I choose to help me lose weight? Well, of course, choose the low-fat food, the non-fat food, right? So imagine this. You have a batch of mice. Half of the mice get Diet Coke. The other half of the mice get Coke. Who's heavier at six months? Diet Coke. Wow. Why? Let's do this again. I give one half of the mice regular water to drink. The other group of mice, I give saccharin in the water. So I sweeten it a little bit. So they get a little taste of sweetness. Who's heavier at six months? Saccharin. Saccharin. Why? Trick more. Your brain does not like to be tricked, apparently. Now, I don't like to tell you this. I don't want to say this. I personally say we blow off clinic, we go have a Diet Coke, a whiskey, and a cigarette. Huh? A party coke and a smoke, right? There you go. I don't want to say this. I don't like it. When the brain sees sweet and it doesn't have the right number of calories, it seems like it keeps track of that and says, don't worry, I'll get it later. So what is the favorite meal of my patients <coughs> at McDonald's? What do they order? A Big Mac, extra large fries, and... A Diet Coke because I'm watching my weight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want so desperately a Diet Coke to be good for you. They looked at research where they poll people in the United States. It's called the National Health Education Survey. Like millions of people, like the census. Every time you write down that you drink an extra can per day on average of Diet Coke or diet drinks, your weight goes up. So the more diet drinks that you drink, the heavier you are. So do you want to choose the non-fat, unsweetened yogurt when you go to the grocery store, in my opinion? I don't think so. I think that's a foolish decision. I would like it to be true. How many of you were drinking diet drinks before surgery? How good did they work out? <laughs> it seems like a lot of yogurt is non-fat or low-fat. Right, because it makes perfect sense. Full, you know, it's hard it to find makes per it is hard. There is plain if you look, cool. if you that's right. If you look around, there are thousands of yogurt containers in the grocery store that taste like pudding. And lonely, down on the side, all by itself, the poor lonely plain yogurt cup is there going. <laughs> yeah, all by itself. Can you put something in yogurt to make it taste a little bit better? Pudding? Sure, sure. You can make it into pudding if you want. But I'm not sure that really helps you. Now, you could. there are some healthy things in the world, like the blueberry. You want to say fresh fruit? <laughs> blueberry is a very good thing, right? So that sounds like a good idea. Um, blueberry jam is convenient blueberries dipped in sugar. I'm not so sure about that. But strawberries, blueberries, things... Things like that. Splenda. What's that? Splenda. Splenda. Yeah, that's a very good choice. Pineapple. <laughs> pineapple is a fresh fruit. As far as we know, this may sound complex. Dr. Rutledge is here talking today. It sounds very complicated, but let's make it simple. Eat a healthy diet. Fresh fruits and vegetables. Healthy. It's in a can. You can put it in your glove compartment for a year and then eat it. Probably not so much. Okay? That's maybe not your best choice. If you can put it in a can, put it in your glove compartment for a year, maybe not the best choice. Now, does that mean you should never eat something from a can that's been in your glove compartment for a year? No. Knock yourself out. Enjoy. But the foundational principle for good health is to eat a healthy diet. 
duh, as Bart Simpson says, don't. Isn't that obvious? Eat a healthy diet? Okay, let's do one more thing. If you get heavy because you've eaten a junky American diet, then can't you fix yourself by eating a healthy diet? Shouldn't that just fix it? In other words, America is getting fatter. Can't we just say we've got some patients here? Who's having surgery this week? Okay. Why don't we tell you to go home? Get lost. Just eat a healthy diet. Can that fix the problem? Here's my analogy. I can break your new Mercedes with a sledgehammer. I can't fix it with a sledgehammer. So once the engine, the metabolism seems broken, the idea that you can tell somebody eat less and exercise more and that will fix it is unlikely to be successful. And again, I don't want to say this. I don't like that. Well, it does it is the business that I'm in is operating to fix that. But I wish that it could be, that I could just eat less and exercise more and I would be fine. But again, I don't think that's easy. Not for people like us. Your hormones are off a little. And just like you could have hormones that would change other things, it, it can change your weight. I'm sorry, did you have other questions? Yeah, but I, I would rather, I just want to go over the, everything we're supposed to do on an ideally basis. It can be yeah. later. No, no, let's do it. Okay. No, it's good. Because um, wait a minute, here's the reason. You're going to have a video of it. So okay. you can watch this video at home. Great, I'll find right? it. Yeah, so we'll put it up tonight. And you'll have this video there. Super. All of your questions will be answered so you can't forget. Awesome. Tums, I've got Tums Ultra 1000 Calcium Rich. Four times, four, four a day. Does that sound correct or not? Any kind of Tums. Uh, really high doses of calcium over a lifetime might be a little dangerous. So again, we aim for four. If you miss a dose, don't get tense. Okay, so it's... It, because that's what we, we did not do. We, right. did not, we were doing Prilosec, the Omnipraisal, you know, the, we were doing, I was doing one a day, he was doing two a day, and then we, my mom said that somewhere, you know, we're like, ah, oh, let's just stop it. Mm -hmm. That's okay. right. That's a good then choice. Then blew out. I don't know if that, you know. Yeah, but it's, a, it's not a bad choice to stop it, and we may need it, you may not, we'll have to see. Okay, so it's okay, so I can just do, we can just do the, the Tums Ultra 1000. So we should not do the Prilosec. Well, the Prilosec Forever is a question, and we don't put everybody on Prilosec Forever anymore. There is some data now. There are lots, there are probably millions of people that are scheduled to take Prilosec Forever. Those are people who have reflux, acid reflux right, disease. Yeah. Those patients, all those people out in the world are basically scheduled to take Prilosec Forever. Okay? Now, it's been, it's one of the most commonly prescribed drugs in the world right now. Lots, millions of people are taking it, and so now after decades, they figured figured out that it has some side effects, okay? And let's mention them. Number one, it decreases the acid in your stomach, so over the period of years, the Prilosec may actually cause a little bit of increased osteoporosis. So if you take a lifetime of Prilosec, you may have an increased risk of hip fractures or something like that, so we may want to not use it forever or give you a break or things like that. The second thing that's been found is when you decrease the acid in your stomach, you have a chance, very rarely, of a bad germ getting inside you. And that germ is called Clostridia difficile, or C. difficile. And as we say now in uh, <coughs> these, the 2010s, Google it. So Clostridia difficile, Clostridia difficile is one of those super bugs that has kind of gotten out. Um, 20 years ago, when I was a little gro doctor growing up, we saw C. diff in the ICU very rarely. And it was a deadly and dangerous disease. Now, it's all over the place. And so it's much more common, it's still deadly and dangerous, and if you cut down the acid in your stomach, a few people more out of per thousand will get C. diff. So there's, again, another additional slight risk to Prilosec. The third new risk that they found for long-term Prilosec is if you take Prilosec, it may interfere with the heart medicine called Plavix. So Plavix is an antiplatelet drug that protects you from heart attacks, and by taking a lifetime of Prilosec, you may interfere with the Plavix, and so some people are raising concerns about that, although that's, all those are still kind of controversial. So back to the lifetime of Prilosec. Should you do it forever? Well, anything you do, any tablet, any surgery has risks. 
And so you want to weigh the benefits you get from the Prilosec versus its risks. Now, since you've had an ulcer, what we want to do is kill the bad bacteria, make sure you're eating healthy, and then probably in six months or a year, we want to readdress whether you need a lifetime of Prilosec or whether we should stop it and see how you do. And there's no absolute right and wrong answer to that. We'll see over the next six to 12 months how you do otherwise. Now, let's say eight, nine months ago, I had a, I would eat and my stomach would bother me a little over that meal, not prior to it. And I would take a Prilosec and it would go away. That was probably, a, that's probably that ulcer. That was an early warning. That was an ulcer going on. And one of the things we like to do is talk about that because sometimes we, instead of giving you a lifetime of low-dose Prilosec, we'll give you a couple of weeks of the high-dose and see if we can't absolutely put that ulcer to bed. But again, it's, it's, not a, it's not like stamping out metal parts. So you're kind of judging and talking and depending. So, but that could have been the ulcer back then. Okay, then yeah. The other thing was a melatonin. Uh, wait, wait, one ulcer. second. I'm sorry. Yeah. So you're not suggesting, though, and every time Susie disagrees with you that it's the beginning of an ulcer because I can't eat Asian food now. I used to love it. Uh, it, it always gives me a little bit of itchiness, and I think it's the, I don't know, the NSG, or is it, it's almost everybody with um, some of the Chinese food. They well, we would prefer that you called me and worried me and worried yourself and bothered yourself about the possibility of an ulcer after the surgery in any circumstance. So if you go out to eat Asian food and you call me and say, oh, my stomach's upset, I might say avoid Asian food and try and drink orange juice uh, to test to see if the acid in orange juice bothers your stomach, things like that. But always think, if, if, always remember, after my surgery, forever, you can get an ulcer, you can get a perforated ulcer, and so you need to be, I don't know if you need to worry, but you need to be vigilant forever. After the surgery, unfortunately, a well-known, well-described complication that can happen, he had it, is you can get an ulcer. I'm sorry, I don't want to say that, but it can happen. And so, if you eat something crazy, if you were to drink uh, battery acid and your stomach would be upset, you go, okay, but you still probably should call me. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kelly. Oh, no, okay. So, um, Sandy had said melatonin, and I think you had mentioned that one. Okay, this is odd, but melatonin, we kind of, most, most, most of us kind of know about. You've seen it in the newspapers, you know it kind of helps you sleep, right? It's part of the chemical that's released at night, and it turns out, we thought about it mostly as that, but it turns out it's one of the most high concentration of amino acid type chemicals in the gut. And they gave mice ulcers, gave mice ulcers, and they gave half of a melatonin, and the melatonin decreased the incidence of gut ulcers. Plus, melatonin helps release growth hormone, so it's pretty safe. It's based on an amino acid. I like all of our patients taking a little melatonin. Okay. The, um, the ones that I have right now are, have three milligrams of melatonin and 25 mm -hmm. milligrams of theanine. Yeah, I don't know so much about the theanine. That's okay. from, it's from uh, black tea and maybe okay, but uh, I would probably just take melatonin. Solid melatonin, so yeah. I'll get them somewhere else besides Costco then. So well, melatonin. there's a lot of melatonin. You can, I'm sorry. You can get a lot of melatonin that's by itself. Most of them are. Okay, good. Um, Omega-3 fish oil. A minute ago, I was running down supplements. Did you hear me? I was saying bad things about pills. You can't do this with a pill. You can't do this with a pill. You can't do that with a pill. Everything I said about that forget when it comes to fish oil. Fish oil is apparently magic. It decreases arthritis, it makes your skin better, all of our patients need it, it decreases heart attack, it decreases stroke, it actually may prevent people from developing schizophrenia. Huh? Wow. They took kids, young people who had signs that they might be developing schizophrenia and half of them got fish oil and they got less progression if they got fish oil. Fish oil may help protect against depression. They took women and gay who had depression, and fish oil was almost as good as Prozac. So fish oil as a supplement, love it. Love, it. love fish oil. I've got, the one I get at Costco is 1,200 milligrams, and I take one a day. And it's enteric-coated. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Then the other thing that I really, really, really like that I think you is creatine and glutamine. Creatine and glutamine. Glu creatine and glutamine uh, were, well, creatine in particular started out when weightlifters took creatine. And the weightlifters took it and they found, remember prior to creatine, what doctors said is there's nothing that can build extra muscle other than lifting weights. Nothing else. You have to do exercise and nothing else really helps. Then we found that steroids, you know, Barry Bonds and the clear and all things like that helps. But there never was anything really safe that you could take that actually helped you build muscle. Creatine helps build muscle. Two groups of patients lifting weights, the ones who lift weights with creatine build more muscle. They have more strength. This has been studied not once, not twice, but now hundreds of times. Okay? You want more muscle. And it's good in AIDS patients. And again, what about creatine in elderly? They took creatine out to a nursing home. They gave creatine to elderly men and had them do crossword puzzles before and after the creatine. They got smarter after the creatine. In other words, hello, it helps your brain. They gave poor little mice a stroke. They clamped off the artery to the brain and the mice that got creatine had less brain damage. It's neuroprotective. Hello, creatine? Glutamine helps the lining of the gut, it helps uh, inflammation, and helps improve your resistance to infection. It's used in, <coughs> in AIDS patients to help with uh, wasting. Uh, we really like glutamine and creatine as supplements. Do you take it in the powder or a capsule? I don't care. Either way. I do have a question about that. How much do you take? Because the bottle says like seven pills a day of each, and wow, that's... There's no upper limit as far as we know. You can okay, take a lot. so it's kind of like fiber? Yeah, you can't, it's hard to get too much fiber, it's hard to get too much creatine. Okay. Fiber. Can you take fiber one more? Uh, when fiber came to America, <laughs> people said, I can't eat bran cereal. This stuff tastes like you know, cardboard. cardboard. <laughs> so they said, don't worry. We'll add sugar and <laughs> fat and we will make it Chocolate. like pudding in a bar. Yeah. <laughs> So the best thing to do is eat fiber and like raisin bran and oatmeal and fiber tablets. And then if you have to have it as a candy bar, that's also a, a choice, but it's not your first choice. Um, crackers, saltines, since a couple years ago when I had this, but can you eat wheat thins? Or sure. That's okay. Yeah. They don't hurt you. I don't think wheat thins hurt you. Now, right now, since I just had this fix, I've been eating saltines, chicken noodle soup, and the yogurt. Right, because you're healing. When can I deviate a little bit? Now, in the next couple of days, start advancing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Poor guy. He's can I salad? Uh, yeah. Everything's slow as you get used to your new gut. As a, you know, There's a stitch in there. You don't want that to come undone. That would be a bad thing. Oh. Right. Take it easy, introduce, you know, the right kind of food. Small, food. Slow, slow. slow. Yeah. Salad dressing. Okay. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Then the only other thing I'm, that we're that we want to make sure we get is a multiple vitamin. Mm -hmm. It's a great, you know, a I should be taking that. I'm uh, not in a rush, you know, but yeah. Yeah, he's a little different. He's got his prep pack for the next um, 12 days. Right. 11 days. Um, should we wait till that's done to start introducing, reintroducing all these into his diet? None of those things are urgent. Those are for the rest of your life kind of thing. This right. is not a sprint, it's a marathon race. Yeah. So nothing, you don't quick, quick run out of here, you know, <laughs> as soon as I stop this video, you guys sprint out to get to Costa and get some, you know, okay. nothing, nothing's urgent. That was all my questions. Thank you so much. Good. So that'll be on the video tonight. You can. Thank you very much.